It's that time of year where the crazy hacks begin to arrive. In today's video, we're talking about eggs in the garden. Is it worth it? If you're gonna do it, how do you get the best results? What's true, what's false, and everything else in between with science. So the claims for eggs are that they reduce or completely eliminate blossom end rot. They can remove or completely reduce the appearance of snails and slugs. They can add calcium to your soil. It even act as a pH buffer, which if if you've been on this channel long enough, you know I take you very seriously as an important soil health aspect, whether it's houseplants or outdoor gardens. You heard it here first, pH matters. This is gonna be a trend in the future because it came from me. So let's take a look at each one of the things it does solve, whether or not it solves it, and if you wanted it to be solved, how you would do so using eggs if that makes any sense. So the first one being blossom end rot. Now, first off, majority of the plains, North America, is not at all low in calcium or magnesium, shockingly. We're high in both. What we do suffer from is potential pH issues that block the availability of calcium magnesium, but calcium in and of itself is not low in our soils. And this is particularly true if you're just doing regular composting practices or applying compost or fertilizer in any form. Now, what I will say is that blossom and rot isn't always a calcium problem. It could be a watering issue. It could be excessive heat issue. It could be a calcium issue, but keep in mind it could be the other two as well. Now, if we were to use eggs to treat a blossom and rot problem, we would need to apply these very early in the season because calcium is a nutrient that is accumulated within the plant meaning it needs to be provided early on and available to that plant in those beginning stages of the plant's life. So when we looked at the tomato video, when we discussed purpling leaves and weird colorations and how that may be a nutrient issue and how it would affect an adult plant, same thing goes for calcium. It's something that we need to provide early on. If we were to use this, I would highly recommend composting your eggshells then using the compost that's been properly cured in conjunction with a potting soil for your seed starts to ensure that that is provided. Now, you could theoretically grind these into micro mini for like a fine powder. <laughs> and you could do the fine powder even in the garden itself. This is going to be the quickest delivery method of calcium within the egg or from the egg to the plant. It still needs to be decomposed. It still needs the microbes to do their job. So in a seed starting setup, probably isn't gonna happen within that first little bit of the plant's life. However, as an adult plant, you may end up seeing some of that calcium viability towards the end of the year. If you just used straight egg chunks, it's gonna be a long, long while before you get any access to that. Ask anyone who composts and if they use eggs, how long it takes for eggshells to disappear. You find eggshells for many, many moons after they're composted because they're just that difficult to decompose. The claim of a buffer pH is not wrong because very commonly buffer pHs such as lime, for example, contain calcium, which calcium is the, the nutrient in there that is responsible for buffering said pH of soil. However, the volume you would need is going to be pretty darn high to make any real difference in an outdoor setting in particular. But the truth here is the cheaper method is likely going to be a lime addition, or if you're looking just for a calcium addition to your soil, gypsum would be your best bet in that case. So pH buffer, pretty large claim, not wrong, not wrong, just the the sheer volume you would need to make a difference, pretty darn high. Unless you're running a chicken farm and you're throwing out a lot of chicken eggs, I don't see this as viable option. Now, the idea of it cutting up slugs and snails. I've looked into this and I've watched videos on it now at this point. There's nothing to suggest that slugs or snails are at all deterred by eggshells. Even diatomaceous earth is another claim where they tend to just roll right through those. However, that real big fad right now of electroculture where you stick copper in the ground, that actually is a viable option for slug and snail uh, prevention. Copper sheeting, you can get like a, a plate sheeting. I have a plate sheeting and that will destroy slugs and snails. They absolutely despise copper. So option there, that's not eggs. Eggs, crushed eggshells, not so much. What crushed eggshells on the surface, ooh, blah, blah, blah. she finds <laughs> shells by the seashore. <laughs> If you use crushed shells to ward off slugs and snails, I can almost guarantee you that you are most definitely going to invite 
rodents and birds. Birds love eggshells. So if you got eggshells scattered on your soil surface and you start noticing your tomatoes and your strawberries and all these beautiful fruits are disappearing because of rodents and birds, it's likely from the eggshells that brought them there in the first place. Now the next form of egg shell usage, I feel like I should talk about is the use of calcium or eggs in vinegar. So yes, vinegar will release calcium bound inside an egg and make it into a bioavailable form for plant uptake. The byproduct of the eggs and the vinegar is carbon dioxide, water, and calcium. However, you don't know the percentage calcium by volume. It's very difficult to know what value you're adding if you're gonna use this as a foliar spray, for example, which would be the best application in this case. You won't know the concentration, so it's very difficult to say if you're giving enough or not enough. And the other problem here is that you run the risk of acetic acid still being present in that solution, which will harm your plant. It will either kill it if it's really high, or it may just reduce your yields and you may not even notice you're doing any damage because it's such a minute amount. And there's no way to test at home if you have acetic acid just hanging out. Well, I guess you could add baking. Just don't even listen to me. Don't, I'm not even gonna go there. There's no way to tell. Don't do it. You can't, I'm, I'm not the person to tell you not to do anything. You can try whatever. You can be your own garden scientist and do what you want. I just would not recommend it. So best option for your eggshells, dig them down deep as a powderized form in your soil if you're not a composter. If you are a composter, compost it. Feed it to your worms. Your worms will love the grit. And other than that, not a viable option to just throw in the bottom of a hole with some tomatoes. Putting whole eggshells just simply won't decompose. All things considered, it's not gonna harm anything if you put them in except for maybe attracting a few pests, but it's not gonna really benefit you either. So there's your garden hack debunked. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any garden hacks you need debunked. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.